Hi everyone, it's Matt from The Pen Habit, and in this episode of the show, we're actually going to be talking about this pen. This is the Visconti Homo Sapiens Bronze Oversize Pen. This is, uh, it's a mouthful. This is from Visconti, which is an Italian brand, and this is a really interesting pen. The first time I saw this, I was, uh, I, this was one of those, I have to have this pen kind of, uh, kind of things. And since then, I have some thoughts about it we'll talk about in a little bit, but just to kind of go over what the pen is. So this is a big pen. This is a very big pen. You can see on my hand here, if you want to hold it up, it's it's a good size right there. Um, this, uh, this pen is really too big to be um, to be posted, it can be posted, but it to me it's just too big, and and there's no need for it. It's it's quite large without posting it. The pen is made out of a really interesting material. It's a, a resin that is made out of about fifty percent basaltic lava rock from Mount Etna in Italy. I think Mount Etna is in Italy. Note to self: look that up because I don't know geography very well. Um, this is this is uh, it's got a just a really fascinating. Feel. It's it feels not porous per se, but it, it it does feel like it could absorb moisture, and and in fact it does absorb some moisture. I've noticed when I write, if my get sweaty hands, it, it tends to not get slippery because of the the feel of the material. It really is quite an interesting material. Um, this version of the pen, which is the first version that came out, includes um, bronze uh, highlights all the way around. It is. Uh, the center band here says Homo sapiens, uh, standard Visconti bridge clip here. So we've got, and it's spring-loaded, as are all of the Visconti pens that I own. Um, it's really quite quite weighty. It feels very nice um, in the hand. The top is a bronze Visconti cap, and this is one of the pens that has the My Visconti system. So you can actually buy a little magnet mag magnetic tool, see if I can learn how to talk today, that will allow you to remove the cap, and you can either put initials or um, astrological symbols or um, gems in the, the cap of the pen as well. And that's actually kind of neat. I like that a lot. Um, as I mentioned, the clip is spring-loaded. It uh, It's very nice. It uh, it fits, you know, it, the pen is a little big for a pocket, but it will fit, and uh, the clip holds it in place nicely. The uh, There's a, a bronze ring at the bottom and two rings in the cap itself. And this is a vacuum-filled pen, which I actually really like. I like the vacuum-filling pens a lot. So to fill the pen, you actually unscrew the end like this, pull it back, insert it in the ink, push the plunger down, hold it there for a few seconds, and then screw the cap back in, or screw the, the blind cap back in, and, uh, and it will just suck the ink up through the nib. Uh, this nib is actually, you can screw it in and screw it out as well. Um, if you ever want to fill it from a syringe, uh, the whole nib unit comes out as one. And I, that's actually how I filled this, not the last time, but the time before that with the first uh, first couple batches of ink that I put in here because it was from a sample vial. And if you're using sample vials, like if you order, if you're a member of the Goulet Pen Company's Ink Drop, for instance, this pen won't fill from one of those vials. There's just not enough ink in there, and the the it's a very wide pen. It, you have a hard time getting it down there. So at least that's been my experience. The cap has a very interesting locking mechanism. So it's, it's kind of spring-loaded, and you push down and then twist it, and it will lock on. And you can't get it to come off unless you push back down and twist it the other way. And you can see on the uh, on the band how that works. Um, I actually, I don't mind that. I don't love it. I don't hate it. It's just kind of another way of, of uh, keeping the cap on the pen. The nib is 23 karat palladium. This is what they call a dream touch nib. And we'll talk a little bit more about this in the writing sample, but it is uh, it is a very pleasantly springy nib. It's got a nice uh, nice feel to it. You get some quite decent line variation, or you would if this pen weren't so stinking wet when it writes. I mean, I enjoy a wet pen just as much as anybody, but this is redonkulous, and we'll we'll talk a little bit more about this. So, um, in general. I really like the looks of this pen. And if you do much reading online about this pen, one of the things you'll notice is Visconti, they are all about design. They, they, their pens are, in my opinion, some of the, 
the most interesting, most uh, unique, most, in my opinion, again, most beautiful pens out there. And uh, and they really, they, they do design well at Visconti. What they don't do particularly well, as has been my experience thus far with, I bought three Visconti pens on the same day, um, and we'll do reviews of the others, is they seem to be pretty inconsistent in terms of their quality control. And this, uh, this pen is a perfect example of that. And I'll show you what I mean in just a little bit. Um, but from a look standpoint, I love this pen. It from a from a writing standpoint, I'm in like with this pen, not necessarily in love. Um, the section is a little too short for me. I, I like a longer section, and the ridges around the edge, where you do the um, where the cap locks in, um, because the section is so short, you're those they kind of rest on your hands there. Um, I, I don't love that. It it can be a little uncomfortable for me. Um, it appears to be a plastic feed, not an ebonite feed. So this isn't a feed that you can uh, heat set against the nib, as far as I can tell. And please, if I'm wrong, someone correct me. Um, and uh, and I will say that as much as I like the way this pen looks, I just don't love the way it feels. I really like the bronze. Bronze is a metal you don't see often in pens, and this will, over time, start to develop that kind of vertigree patina that you see, you know, for instance, on the Statue of Liberty in the United States. Um, and and I actually kind of like that. It, I like the fact that it ages, but it's not going to be brassing. It, it's, it's actually going to be picking up a really nice patina, and I love the material it's made out of. So this is the Homo sapiens oversized bronze from Visconti. It has a fine nib on it, and I'll show you that when we do our writing sample. So let's uh, let's head over and do a little bit of writing. So here is the Visconti Homo sapiens bronze oversize. As I mentioned, it is quite a large pen. Uh, the spring-loaded bridge clip with Visconti on either side, and there is the Homo sapiens on the center band. Here is the uh, locking mechanism. And you can see, get the camera to focus, the unusual kind of ridges there above the section. There's the feed, and here is that dream touch nib. So, so let me set this cap aside, and let's start doing just a bit of writing here. So this is the this Conti. bronze, and we are doing the oversized version. There is also a, I believe they call it a midi version, which for someone in music kind of throws me off. And this is a 23 carat or carat palladium nib. There's an eye in there I think I missed. Um, and this is what they call the dream touch nib. Um, and if you look at the nib, you can actually see there's a fair bit of flex in this nib, and we'll talk about that more in just a little bit. Uh, I am using Deatramentis, I think that's how it's spelled, Aubergine, which is an ink I like quite a bit. It's a beautiful, rich purple color. And, uh, and of course, the paper is Rhodia. 80 gram, pretty standard paper. All right. So, let us do a bit of writing. Dot, dot, dot. Okay, so in terms of writing, this pen actually has a very nice... It is pretty smooth. It's not as smooth as my other Visconti pens, and I haven't looked at um, at the alignment on this pen yet. There's a reason why I haven't. This is a very expensive pen, at least it is for me. Um, I think the list is 650 or somewhere right around there for this pen. Um, 
I bought it locally here in the Seattle area for a fair bit less than that, but even still, it's an expensive pen, and finding a replacement nib for this is probably not going to be super easy, so I didn't want to start futzing around with it, particularly because I'm not very good at futzing around with nibs yet, and, and uh, a pen this expensive is not how I want to learn. So um, it's smooth-ish, but not super smooth, which I think leads to what I was talking about earlier with the um, lack of quality control for Visconti pens. Um, I have two other pens, two that are far less expensive that I'll talk about in future videos, and both of those are just butter smooth. They really are spectacularly, wonderfully smooth. And uh, this one, less so. Um, as I mentioned, this is a fine point pen, but as part of this velvet touch, there is quite a bit of spring. Um, you know, it's almost as much as flex in it as my, um, I have a Pilot uh, Falcon, a Namiki Falcon, and that uh, that seems to be fairly, in terms of the, the amount of flex, fairly similar in feel, requires about the same amount of force. Now, the one thing I will say, this is a fine point pen, but this line, she is not a fine line. And the reason, part of the reason for that is because there is so much ink in being, being laid down on the paper. And part of the reason for that is this pen is a gusher. It puts out a lot, a lot, a lot of ink. And I'll, I'll show you what I mean here in just a little bit when I get to the other side. But this pen is probably the wettest pen I own. And uh, to the point where it is unusable for me in most situations. I mean, look at that. That's just, it drenches the paper. And um, you can see, of course, it's not going to do it now. When I was playing with this last night using the same ink, um, there was quite a bit of bleed through even on this very same paper. Uh, today, it doesn't seem to be as bad as it has been, but it, uh, well, but even still, it's just, there's a lot of ink that gets uh, that, that comes out of this pen. So for me, I can't use this for the majority of the stuff that I want to do, uh, taking notes in meetings or writing in a journal, because it's just that it puts out so much ink. Now, if I'm doing the flex writing, you know, kind of flexy writing, then that's great. Um, but the problem is that because this pen is laying down such a heavy line of ink, it's not fine enough for the line variation to really make a huge difference. So normally you'd see a very fine line and then you put weight on it and it just, there is some difference and it's nice, but it's not spectacular. If this were putting down a little bit less ink um, and getting a bit finer line, then I think I would, I would enjoy the flex on this better. Now today, as I mentioned, it seems to not be as wet as it was last night when I was using it. And that may be a result of a recent fill, but from checking online, this the reason they were able to get such a, a quote-unquote dream touch feel to the nib is because, according to a lot of people, there's just a lot of, of really wet pens. Um, and it seems to be getting better the more I use it, um, where it's less and less wet, uh, which which bothers me. I, I don't want to have to worry about whether or not I'm actually going to be able to use my pen to write the way I want to. Um, so I like the pen, but I don't love the pen. Now, tomorrow morning, uh, today today's Friday night, and tomorrow morning on Saturday morning, I'm actually going to take the pen back to the store and see if they can't adjust the nib for me to make it a little less wet. Um, and if they are able to, then this will, I think, very quickly become one of my favorite pens because, as I mentioned, I love the look, I love the feel, I love the unique materials, I love the bronze, I really love this basaltic lava resin. Um, I even like the, f the flexiness of the nib um, without it being a full flex nib. But until I, can, until I can deal with it just putting so much ink and being such a wide line for, for a fine point pen, um, I don't know how, that I'm going to be able to use this all that often. So for me, this is a kind of a middle of the road. And for as expensive as this pen was, I don't know that I'm really comfortable Spending this kind of spending this kind of money for a pen that I'm just not crazy about. So we'll see if tomorrow it works out well and I'm able to get the pen adjusted the way I like it. Then this will stay in my collection. If not, I might return it and go with something else. But before I did, I wanted to uh, wanted to talk about it here on the podcast or on the the video. And uh, of course, I will 
put an update in the notes on the video to let you know what happens. I might even do just a quick follow-up video with some more writing after it's been adjusted to let you know if it has gotten better. So, thank you very much for watching. This is the Visconti Homo Sapiens Bronze Oversize. And uh, we will see you here next time on The Pen Habit. Thanks for watching.